Okay, welcome everybody. My name is Mitch Friars, and I'll be uh, coordinating the meeting today on uh, on iPhone, iPad, and we're going to focus on uh, iOS 11 and what we know about that from the developers conference that was announced last week. Uh, and I'm working with the developer, so I actually have a copy of that uh, up and going on my iPad. Uh, it is buggy. I had it going on my phone and um, and restored back to iOS 10 because of the bugs I was encountering. Um, but I'll live, I'm living with those bugs on the iPad. Uh, so anybody here new for the very first time? Okay, that's great. We don't have to go with those announcements other than. Um, there are no meetings in July and August. They will resume again on the first Wednesday in September. Uh, the meeting next week will be on uh, general questions on... on yeah, Don's going to do the uh, meeting next next week. Who is? Don. Don? He's got it. And what's he doing it on? Uh, questions and answers, and, uh, and if he comes in, he can... Okay. He'll be here in a few minutes. But. Perfect. Perfect. And then... Uh, Bob Kennedy has a uh, an announcement. Well, it's just the, the usual. The uh, those of you who like photography, our photo club has another exhibit in the back end of the library. So if you're coming in and out the front, go to the back, and if you're coming in through the back, look around. And how long will that exhibit be up? A month. A month. Okay. So end of July. Okay. Well, whatever. Perfect. You will not be leaving by the time. Okay. Good. Um, so, as I mentioned, I have iOS uh, 11, the, um, the beta, up and going on my iPad. You might notice that it looks a little bit uh, different. Uh, at the bottom, one of the big changes that I really like is this menu bar that's similar to on a Mac computer. Uh, that you can put whatever you want down there. You can put as many items as you want, but um, uh, unlike the Mac, you, it, there's not an option for you to, as you're, as you're going across the menu bar, for the thing to open up real big. So the more you put on there, the smaller they get. So there's no limit? There's no limit that I've uh, been told of. Uh, you'll notice that there's a, you, you can barely see it between the bumblebee and the folder. There's a little line there. The apps that are on the right-hand side, uh, those three, are just ones that I've used recently. And it's just a way to quickly go to them, one of the ways. Uh, the other ones, you know, you, you put on whatever you want, and if you don't want one on, so like, um, if I want to take my photos and move it, I just move it up here. Oops. They have to jiggle first, don't they? No, they don't have to jiggle. There. Uh, oops, it didn't move because I, I got I got too many I got too many on I got too many on that page. So let me uh, let me get to a page. They move to another page. Yeah, you can move to another page. No, but you have to be on that page. Automatically. No, it does not. <coughs> so if I go to here, now it's jiggling, but I don't want it to. Here, no, just put it right there. Okay. So when you put it on the bar, it disappears from the page it was on. So if you grab it and just pull it down here, put it on the bar. See how they got smaller? Okay. Uh, so I put some of the ones that I use more often on there, um, and that's a, a, a that's a nice feature that I really uh, like quite a bit. That's iOS 11? This is iOS 11. And it's not, this is not on the phone, this is on the iPad. It'll be on, it'll be available on iPads going back three or four different generations. Yes. Uh, do they disappear? When no, they, they stay. And, and you cannot make them disappear? No, you cannot make them disappear. Uh, well, they disappear, I'm sorry. They disappear if I pull something up. So if I open up mail, it disappears. Okay. But 
if I, one of the things that's here is if I want to go, if, if I go like this and bring it back, I can go and then, I was going to go over this a little bit later, but I'll go into it a little bit now. So I can go here and I can say, okay, I want to open up Safari. And then Safari opens up just as, first it opens up just as a, um, a, a sort of a dummy page. Uh, doesn't, it's not a live page. To make it live, you have to, um, there's a trick to making it live. I think I don't remember what it is. I don't quite understand what you said. Um, it's not live? It's not live. It's not live. Well, it's, it's, it's live, but it's not. It's not, it's not the uh, screen, the, the dual screen, okay? And to do the dual screen, you have to, uh, uh, there's a, there. Now it's the dual screen. What did you do? I pulled that? that down from the top. That pulled bar. that down to the top, that little bar. And now it's, now it's back to the other. So, but you'll notice right in the middle of the screen, right about where the player thing is, you'll notice when I do it, a little bar comes there. See it? And then I, now I can go like this and do dual screen. So that's sort of nice. Uh, that was a feature that was in iOS 10, but I don't think it worked as, I never used it that much. I didn't find it worked very well. But the one thing that's sort of nice about this is you can, you can say, okay, I'm going to go over here in mail, and I'm going to do a new mail, and I'll do one to, um, I'll do one to George, because he's always a good one to, uh, I don't know what these other people there, I just want, just want George, because of the confidential nature of this. And, okay, we'll do a test. Now we'll go over here, and then I can go over here, and, um, and go over here, I'm going to get this keyboard down, go back to this page, and then grab this, and I can just put that right there, okay? Um, then I can also, um, I can also go to a different page, so I could go to, um, let's see, let's go here and go to uh, Universal Studios is a good one, so there you go. Remember when you said here, we don't see America yeah, here. Yeah, uh, okay. Uh, I pulled up another site, Universal Studios, and I can say, oh, well, here's a nice uh, photo that, uh, here's a, here's a, come on. Okay, so if I go to here, and I grab this photo, you're supposed to be able to just take these photos and Take them right on over. It's not allowing me to do that, but let's see if it allows me to grab this site again. Yeah. So now George can check my Universal Studios. But it does, it usually allows you to grab a photo and pull it right on over and drop it in. There's a lot of things you can drop in. Uh, and, um, and then you can just send it off to somebody, which I think is, that's a neat feature as well. And obviously, I haven't mastered it yet. Uh, but I'm gonna, I have a video on this that I'm going to go over. So I'll cancel this because I know George really isn't interested in this stuff. Um, and uh, I'll take and close this out. Actually, uh, I'm going to bring that back. I can't bring it back. Um, one of the things you can do, let me just pull that back up here. So, again, the way you got that is went here, and I pulled on, um, let's see, it was Safari, come on, I'm just putting my finger on the Safari thing, and bring it over here, and again, this comes up, and then to make it a live site, I have to go to the top, that top little thing above the Lowe's Hotel, and grab that, and just pull that down like that, and that makes it a, a dual site, and then you can adjust it, split screen, okay? Uh, but now, what I wanted to do was 
get out of here and go to this area. Um, and how did you do that? You hit the home button twice. So now if you hit your home button twice and you'll see all the pages you have open, they've changed that. So now I hit the home button twice. And this is what comes up. And this shows the pages that I have open. The only thing I don't like about this is you can't just swipe them to get rid of them. You have to hold down and you have to X out each one. But one of the things that's interesting is I can go, I can go to, uh, uh, I can go to, I'll go to here. Okay, it's a settings. Uh, and I can decide, well, wait a minute, I want to go back to that, I want to go back to that split screen. The split screen stays, which is sort of nice. And it stays until you get rid of it. How did you, how did you get back to it? Okay, again, hold, okay. Double, double do that, and all your pages are there, and I just hit the split screen. So you double click the home button to get that screen? Yes. Now, the other thing, and again, this will be, talked about in the video that they redid is this uh, control center over to the uh, right hand side and this is really uh, at first it was like what did they do here um, but like when, I'm going to touch on the um, uh, on the on right on, on this this one right here the cellular data and you can turn it on and off um, but the area on the right hand side is the control panel. And again, um, it, it's got a lot, so at the top it's got the airplane, you see the airplane mode there, and it's got the um, LTE, which is that little thing with the, uh, it's got um, Bluetooth, it's got the Wi-Fi, and then below it it's got whatever sound or music you're playing. Um, then you can adjust the volume with, with this volume thing right here, you just up and down. That's the speaker one, right over here. You just grab that, hold it, and then you can just change the volume on your machine up and down. And the same thing with the brightness. So here's the brightness, and I can make it as little as, as much as I want. Um, the mirroring is below. Then all these icons on the side, you got the flashlight, you've got uh, the, uh, and you can add things. And I added a lot of things on here. So I have the, the stopwatches on here. So I can start a 15 minute stopwatch. Um, the camera is on here. How do you add them? And I'm gonna show that. So where you go to add them is we, you go into settings, normal settings, the wheel, and you go to control center right under notifications. I'm going to press that, okay? And you'll see the ones that I have on there. So I've got the flashlight, the timer, the camera. I can, I can change the order. So if all of a sudden I want... Um, the um, alarm up here, I can change that. Um, if I decide, well, I don't, I, I really don't want the text size on there, I can remove that, I can remove screen recording, which is a nice thing that they've added. Uh, here's all the ones that I could add at the bottom. So, um, and there'll be more, it's a function of which apps you have one on your machine. So, uh, I, could have, I, I could add my Apple Remote TV, um, app, uh, I can add accessibility shortcut, magnifier, and so on. The way you add them, so I took off stopwatch, so if I want stopwatch back on, I go to that stopwatch, it's a second from the bottom, hit the plus sign, takes it right up to the, right up to the area again. So I'm going to take the stopwatch off, remove that, and I'm going to remove the alarm for right now. And now I'm going to get out of here and go back to the thing, and you'll notice that they're not there. So uh, that's a pretty nice uh, new feature. So with that, what I wanted to do 
is to go over a couple of videos that I found that I thought were uh, sort of helpful. Hey there, Saki here from Saki Tech, and in today's video, I would like to go over some of the top features for iOS 11 running on an iPad Pro. For this demonstration, I'm using an iPad Pro 12.9 inches, but the whole video applies equally to all supported iPad models, including the iPad Pro 9.7 inch model. So let's dive in and take a look at some of the new fantastic features. Alright, so the first thing I want to talk about is called the new dock, and as you can see, you're sitting at the bottom here. Uh, the way this dock is different than the previous dock on the iPad, first of all, the other one's attached, and you could only add a limited number of apps to it, and it was basically all you could do is drag an app into it and drag an app out of it, and the maximum number was six or five. Now with this new dock, you can add as many apps as you want. So basically, I can grab this camera uh, application right here, I can drag it into my dock, and as you can see, the dock expands. This is absolutely fantastic, uh, not in one way, but because it also extends the multitasking functionality of the iPad, which is the next thing I want to talk about. So you've got the dock, that's new, it's a new style, but then how can you use the dock in different ways? So let's say I'm launching an application right here, so the news application is running. So how do I uh, use the dock from here uh, to interact with my iPad in new ways? All I do is uh, slowly swipe to the top, and that brings up the customizable dock. And from there, I can, for example, switch to any of the applications that are sitting on the dock. So let's just launch the music application. So as you can see, that's how easy it is to switch apps now. Now the other thing you can do with the dock is if you are in an app, now normally uh, if you're not in an app, what you do is you swipe up and that brings up the multitasking pane. It also brings up the control center which has been consolidated with the multitasking pane. And from here, just out of curiosity, you can uh, reduce or increase the brightness of the iPad. Also you have the slider for the volume, you can go minimum, maximum, whatever you want. And also if you press on them, they bring up a bigger controller that you can also use. Okay, so that's an option that you have. Let's just lower the voice all the way to the bottom. And of course, you can do the same thing with this. If you press and hold, it brings up the full menu, uh, which was normally available in the previous versions on the iOS 10 in a different window, but now you can just press and hold on it and it brings up the expanded options, all right? Anyway, let's go back into the application. I'm gonna show you one more thing. So with the dock, uh, if you swipe slowly, it's gonna bring up the dock. You can pull it down if you don't want it. But if you keep swiping upwards, it actually transitions you into the multitasking pane plus the consolidated control center on the corner. And from here, again, you can switch apps if you want and all that good stuff. Okay, so now that we have seen what the dock is and how you can launch it from different uh, places, uh, let's take a look at how multitasking, the split screen multitasking and the slide over multitasking has changed its interface for the better. So again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to launch one application, and let's say I want to do slide over multitasking, which is not split screen multitasking, it's just going to be slide over multitasking. What you want to do is bring up the dock, and then simply grab the application that you want to slide over, and put it right here. So right now, uh, this window isn't active, but that window is in fact active. And I can take this dock, I can put it to this side if I want to, or I can put it to this side. It looks like if I do tap here, that doesn't go away. So this will just sit here on the side, dock on the corner, but it's still not split screen multitasking. Now if I want to convert this slide over view, this is the slide over view right here. When the thing is just docked, you can move it around. If I want to uh, switch to split screen multitasking, oops, let me see, you just have to do like this, and it connects, now it's split screen multitasking, I can actually split the window, okay? That's absolutely phenomenal, guys. And again, I can bring up the dock again, I can go up again, as you can see, and that split screen window that I had remains over there. If I tap it, it brings up again. It brings back the split screen view. Okay, let me go back up again. But if I don't want the split screen, I can go back to settings if I so desire, or I can go back into my dock 
okay? And I can uh, start another uh, slide over. I can do this one right here. Let's put it over here. Boom. So we have a slide over right now. If I go back here, if I go back to news, and uh, it brings up, let me, let me just uh, send this away. I just want to show you guys one more time how to bring up the uh, slide over window. So you pull that up, you grab any update you want, and you drop it right there, that slide over. And then if you go like this, that's split screen multitasking, and that's the new interface on iOS 11. Fantastic. Also, when you're performing the split screen multitasking, you actually have windows interact with each other uh, using drag and drop gestures. So basically, let's go to my email over here, and uh, let's also bring up the uh, Safari web browser and make this a split screen multitasking uh, thing. So grab that, put it right here, and then swipe this down, and now we have split screen multitasking. Let's just make this equal, so we have half and half. And let's start create a new email. And in the new email, let's say that I want to share the link of this website that I'm looking at right now uh, in the email with the person I'm going to send the email to. All I do is, for example, drag and drop that link and dump it right here, and that link is now going to take you to apple.com. In the same way, I can actually drag and drop images, uh, hyperlinks, and anything that you can think of that's draggable from this window to that window, from that window to this window, if uh, applicable. So that's also fantastic. Now let's move on to some of the other features of the iOS 11 on the iPad. Now one more thing I want to show you guys is if you do bring up the multitasking pane, either this way or by double tapping the home button, which has always been there, uh, if you want to get rid of an application, or a split screen combo, just like that, all you do is press and hold, which brings the ability to uh, press X, and that actually closes the window that you don't want anymore. Okay, so that's the way uh, to clear the windows if you so desire on iOS 11. Now the other massive feature that I absolutely adore is has to do with the Apple Pencil. So basically what this is called is this is called the Instant Notes. And if you were in the lock screen, all you have to do is tap the screen and that brings up the notes application and you can start taking notes immediately. Now let me show you how that works. So you do have to go to the, uh, the lock screen, which is right there. You tap on the screen and that brings up the notes application. I can quickly start taking notes. And the iPad as of now is not unlocked. It is still locked. If I try to go into the Apple iPod, uh, iPad, it's going to ask me to put in the uh, PIN number because the iPad was in fact locked. All that it was, I uh, let me do that one more time. I open the uh, I open the uh, lock screen. I tap on the lock screen with my Apple Pencil, and that brought up a quick note, and I can start taking notes immediately. And all these notes get saved. So when I go back into my notes application later, I will see these under their own instant notes folder. Another fantastic feature. All right. So the next feature that I want to talk about is the new document scanner feature that's built into the Notes application. It's going to be a little bit hard to demonstrate right now because of the way the iPad is sitting on the table, but I'm going to show you exactly what to do to activate this feature. So first, launch the Notes application, and then create a new note. And what you want to do is you want to click the plus sign over here, and on the top it says Scan Documents. If you tap this, it's going to launch the camera, and then you can use that camera to take a photo of a document which is going to be scanned into your notes applications and then you can do whatever you want with that document. Uh, you can use the Apple Pencil to annotate it uh, or write on it or edit it or whatever or you can just use your fingers to manipulate uh, the same things. Alright, so that's the new document scanning feature and I think it's absolutely fantastic and very practical and very useful. Okay, so that's almost the end of the video but one final thing I want to show you guys is if you do look at the dock at the bottom over here, uh, here the dock is separated by a line. You'll see some applications here that you use frequently, or maybe other applications that are connected to the iPad via your iPhone, such as continuity applications. They'll show up right here in this separated dock. So this side, you have all the ones that you put there yourself. And over here, it's a dynamic list. It puts in the frequently used apps or some other things every now and then. And that is the end of the video. There's some more features. I'm going to be making some more detailed videos. But for now, I want you to share the top features that I personally really, really love uh, with you guys. 
So make sure to subscribe to Saki Tech for more videos to come. Give this video a big thumbs up. And also, make sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Saki Tech Online. Guys, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, just drop it down below and have a fantastic day. Yes, the keyboard here looks like more like a regular keyboard. Oh, it is, it, it is on the, um, um, hold on just a second, this thing will start. Again. It, is. it is on the, um, on the new iPads, on the iPad, the new iPad Pro and the new iPad Pro this size because it's the same size but the screen is bigger because the, the bezel is smaller, they were able to put a full keyboard. Uh, which is one of the things that they mentioned in the in the presentation. If you watch the WWF, uh, so it's not the new iOS; it's the new. It's one. actually the device. device. Yeah, and that's why you've got to go get one, George. So they'll have a posture piece. Huh? They'll have a posture piece. Yeah, they have a full keyboard. So it doesn't have to go between letters to the numbers and all that. Well, no, that that portion is. Um, Unfortunately, I can't show it to you. They do show on that full keyboard. Um, they might even show that on the regular now, but they do show the numbers. That, so if you're on the letters, it'll show the numbers underneath it. Okay. If you pull down, you can actually quickly get a number. So if you're if you're typing in and all of a sudden you need a five, you can just go up there and pull down, and a five will appear. I haven't used that much, but that's a nice feature. And it also shows the location of the case? Yes. In whichever mode it is. Uh, yes, I believe it does. Again, I haven't used that too much. Um, now, let me get back to this email, and I want to play this next one. Uh, I want you to play this file one. There's a new uh, feature. Make sure this is the right one. Yeah. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate the features of the new Files app on iOS 11. So as you can see right here, here's my iCloud Drive. This is the basic layout that you start out with. You have the ability to see locations, favorites, tabs, and the file system of what you're doing with a big switch bar on the top. So let's get started. So there, there's a new icon that comes with the device, and it's just called Files. And when you open it up, this is what you'll see. And right now, and this guy will explain this because I was getting, I was watching another video and they said, oh, you're going to be able to get your Dropbox documents in here and everything else. Well, I'm trying to figure out how to get Dropbox in. And I'm watching this guy's video and he says, well, eventually, when the third party cloud people tie into this, you'll be able to get them. So, uh, and he specifically mentions Dropbox isn't there yet, but it will be. So on, the, on that list of locations, the only the only ones that are available now in the developer copy of the software are the uh, iCloud on my iPad and recently deleted. Uh, but apparently on down the road, Dropbox will be there, and that's where I keep all my stuff, almost all my stuff. So anyhow, this is a, a he talks about this, and uh, it is a pretty good feat. Uh, feature and uh, I wanted to play it. The volume's a little lower on this one, and we've got it as loud as it'll go right now, unless unless it can be turned up in the back room. Uh, yeah, just play it on the seat. Okay. Right by one in the documents. So I'm going to tap documents, and I see the document that I made in one of my other videos. So what I'm going to do is. a couple of these. So let's start off with info. We get something that looks very familiar to Mac users. It almost looks like the info or the inspector pack that was introduced many years ago. We have the ability to add tags, just like we would on the Mac. You can see here that I can add the tags, and right here I'll add, let's say, a red tag. So I tap red, and now a little red dot is appeared next to it, and I can see a bunch of things about it. Now let's see other features we have. We can share the document. We can click share, and then the share sheet of the UI activity view controller will appear. 
And I can see things like the tags. I can share it with other people. You can see my other computers on this. And I can copy it to other apps that are known on the device. I can add people, so on and so forth. And then what I can do is I can do things like rename it. I can simply go to here and I can say iOS 11 demo document. And there we go. It's been renamed. I can also copy it. And now it appears as though I can paste it. By simply tapping and holding on any part of the blank part of the documents, I'm able to see things. I'll first paste. It says I can replace or I can stop. I'm going to stop for now. Or I can tap info and I can see info about this folder. I can create a new folder, such as test. I can move this document into test, simple as drag and drop, and I can paste this document right back into the folder, and you'll see that it will appear there soon. One of the other things that they refine is that when you tap on a document, you get the quick look. So for instance, I just tapped on this Word document, and I see a quick look inspection of the document. I have the ability to share the document up in the right-hand corner, and I have the ability to tap done. Now let's try and delete these two folder and documents. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap, and then I'm going to click delete. And for the next one, I'm going to click select, and then I'll click delete. Now, a neat feature of the Files app on the iPad is that similar to the feature brought to the Mac last year, which was the ability that all of my recently deleted that I had on my Mac, on my other iOS devices, have already been pre-populated if they were in my cloud drive. And then you can see those other folders that we just talked about are right in the trash. To restore them, it's pretty simple. All you have to do is hover over no, the and tap recover. Yeah. Tap and recover will bring it right back to iCloud Drive where I can click documents. And you can see the document is back in the folder as expected. He had that cloud now we're working with this document. So it should appear in our recents. When I tap recents, you can see that this new view comes up where I can see recent documents and I can see tags. And this allows you to keep track of things that are working on, especially if you're going through many different apps. Although a pain in past versions of iOS, adding email attachment is now very easy in iOS 11. All I have to do is click up, see the mail icon, drag it to the right side <coughs> of the window, and it'll pop up right here. Then what I can do is I can simply highlight over this Word document and drag it right into the mail message. And you can see that right there, the attachment is all ready to go. And then to make it disappear, all I have to do is slide to the right as I'm down there. And the window disappears, and I'm back to the Files app, File Locations. Although previous versions of iOS supported this in a way which allowed you to see what pane you were going to receive, whether it was going to be a pane for Google Drive, a pane for OneDrive, a pane for Dropbox, now you can incorporate those all into the Files app. So all you have to do is tap Edit. And when the apps begin to support them on your locations, you will be able to see the other ones that are there. All I have to do is I can disable and I can re-enable. Right now, the only options I have are iCloud Drive and I have my iPad. And you can play with those to see what they do. So when I disable iCloud Drive and then I tap Done, you can notice iCloud Drive is gone now. If I also disable on my iPad, now I have no locations to store files that are enabled in the File app. Now I have no locations that are enabled to store files in the Files app. One thing that I did notice is that you don't seem to be able to create new tags from this sidebar. You actually have to be looking at a file. So in order to create a new tag, you actually have to go into a location such as iCloud Drive, find a document, tap on the file, click Tags, and then you're presented with the ability to add a new tag. In this version of iOS 11, it does not seem like you have the ability to add tags directly from the sidebar. This concludes the demonstration of the Files app on iOS 11. So, um, a lot of people think that's going to be a really useful feature, and I, and I think it probably will be. And again, that location area over the side he was talking about, that right now all he has is the, on this iPad and iCloud Drive. Eventually, if you use Dropbox, Dropbox will appear there, and if you're using um, whatever Google's Cloud stuff is, Google stuff will appear there. And you'll be able to just load them in if you want to. Yes. What do you mean that it's getting much closer to the Mac OS? Yes. And you won't have to worry about the differences. 
Yeah, yes. It, you know, that's, that's a good point. Probably, that's a good point. I hope they made the similar adjustments in the Mac OS that's coming up. Yeah, they're, they're trying to make those. And, you know, you just know that, I don't know if it's a year, two years, three years down the road, there's and not. Been, Mac the, OS is coming. So they're they're going to just marry them. probably yeah. be a few that matches. Yeah. So, uh, but I mean, I think the handwriting's on the wall, but that eventually there's going to be one operating system. Yeah. But it's probably, either, you know, like having that menu bar at the bottom, having this uh, file system, uh, redoing the whole file system, is just an indication of things to come down the pipe. Not this fall, but eventually. Didn't they say Mac OS will have a new file system? They did not say that. Yes, I think they did. Did they? Okay. So that might be it. Yeah. Um, Must be. Okay, now there's one, uh, we'll get some more time. So there's one more uh, that I had, and it was on the iPhone, I believe, and this guy was a little jittery. Also, guys, iOS 11 is finally here, and it seems too good to be true. There's honestly so many features inside of it, but in this video, I wanted to share with you the top 11 features, the ground features of iOS 11 that make it what it is. So we're going to be going over the big stuff in this video, but don't worry, a lot of the more hidden, less known features we're going to talk okay, about. Guy goes pretty fast, video. so, so let's go ahead and explore iOS 11 and see what Apple changed in its updates. Now, the very first thing is the lock screen. It doesn't seem different, but trust me, there's a lot to talk about here. So first off, unlocking. Slide to unlock is back. You can actually slide it up and unlock your phone if you don't have a passcode. If you have a passcode, the home, press home to unlock is still as it was. Now the notification system on lock screen has been rethought, so you can bring up older notifications right here. That completely replaces the swipe down from the top over there. Super neat. That way these notifications don't just randomly disappear, they're always there. Over here is your widgets view. As you can see, there's some bugs with iOS as it is still a beta right now. Over here is the camera, so that's just as usual. But the lock screen has been rethought, and even the music player, which looks really, really cool, fits well with the notifications. So I just want to show you a little demo of that. And look at that, you got the new music player. Now, if you receive a notification, it will share the lock screen space with the music player just like that. Instead of before where the music player would completely hog the lock screen page, it now shares the space, super neat. Now jumping in, you'll notice that animations and the look of iOS 11 is a lot different too. Starting from the lock screen and the animation it takes to unlock iOS, look at that, very, very smooth. You'll notice Apple reworked the animations everywhere from something like opening an app and closing it, there's a very subtle different animation. You'll notice Exiting an app greets you, like runs at your face. So just like that, we'll take a look at that. Kind of a cool effect, I like that. Things such as even going into a sub-menu, you'll see that the animations change up there as it adjusts to the selection you're going to make. Things as small as even moving applications around in wiggle mode have a new animation as well. It's a lot stickier, so it doesn't like bounce around everywhere, I noticed that. Opening up the control center even has a different animation. You know, the notification center, which by the way, takes you back to the lock screen look right here. So it's a very curious choice, but it doesn't lock the phone. On the dock, you'll notice there are no icon labels whatsoever, which is a very clean look. I welcome it. I wish there was an option to turn all of them off. Also, over here, you'll notice that the calculator has new icons. There's a new stock folder of files. We'll get to that. And the App Store and iTunes have new icon labels. So the overall look and feel of iOS has been reimagined. It doesn't look too different, but there certainly are updates to the animations and some little tiny details with the looks. Oh, not to mention the app switcher. So that has a new animation as well. It's a little bit different. Slides in from the side. Very clean. I think it works well. So next up is messages. This one got a huge rework from Apple. So the overall interface is a little bit different. You'll notice it looks a lot like the music application. In fact, a lot of iOS 11 draws inspiration from the music application. But in here, jump into a conversation on the bottom, you'll notice that these settings have been a little bit tweaked. Instead of the three icon setup over here that was a little busy, you have this over here. And the App Store has a new interface down here for the sticker packs and things like that. So you can quickly look through those if you want to do the heartbeat feature. 
it's still here, hasn't gone anywhere, just a nice clean new interface. And Apple has added some new effects, so if you want to go to the screen, you can actually see there are several new effects over here, the spotlight, and uh, I think that's just about it. So there are some new effects in the side of my message, which has been completely reworked. My message conversations will now be synced across all devices, which is a really cool feature, as you no longer have to take that storage and keep it on your device, it's kept in the cloud instead, which saves you a lot of room. Next up, the control center. Personal opinion, I do like it. It seems a little hectic, honestly, I think Apple could have optimized it just a little bit better, but overall, it does the job. It's exactly what I wanted, a one-page control center. So you have a slider over here, for the brightness, a slider for the volume. Kind of an elegant little solution there. So it seems like it's pretty limited, but don't be fooled. Not only is 3D Touch supported in almost every area here, actually in every area you can 3D Touch, especially useful on this one, which you can just slide up real quick instead of having to select an option uh, for the flash over here. Of course, you have your usual toggles that are a little bit optimized, a little bit different. Looks really clean. You have a nice little animation when turning on orientation lock. This is the only one without a 3D touch toggle. Over here you have a platter full of controls and stuff, and that's cool, you can even enable personal hotspots and other things. But it gets better, guys. You can actually control how many toggles you want to have in Control Center, hence the empty space up here. As you add more, this moves up. Let me add some and show you. So in the Control Center tab over here, go ahead and find a toggle. This is so similar to Flip Control Center, to CC settings, a lot that we've seen in the jailbreak side of things. But if you want to add a low power toggle, you can do that. So go ahead, select plus, uh, let's say, actually we'll just add all of them, why not? Let's go ham on the control center and magnifier. Cool, so we have all of these settings enabled. Now jump into control center, whoa, look at that. You got a lot of extra things in here, so that's super cool. Low power mode, man, thank you Apple for listening. What's good? Interesting question, phone. Tell me your most interesting story. I'm certain you've heard it before. Look at that, Siri has a new voice. She sounds a lot more human, you could say. And this applies to both female and male voices. So Apple has been working for a long time to rework the voice, make it a lot more natural. Siri's got a new interface too. So Siri, what's the definition of pi? Which word? P, I. Look at that. As noun, it means the 16th letter of the Greek alphabet, Greek letter pi. And check that out. So she's got a new interface completely, looks really, really clean, works well with the design language of iOS 11 overall. And there's also a translation. Uh, Siri, translate we oui in French. Yeah. Well, that's cool. It's, this is in beta. It's not fully cooked yet, but look at that. You can translate certain languages right now in Siri. That is so nice. There's also a new Siri kits, more APIs. So Siri's going to get a lot stronger. You're going to see her in more third-party applications. So Siri's got a huge rework for iOS 11. And there's an entirely new learning system for Siri where she will make suggestions in a whole bunch of different applications based on your behavior. So she will learn your behavior, your habits, and she will suggest things based on that. Apple gave a lot of good examples. Let's say you always hit the gym, she'll remind you, or you, know, you tell her to remind you something on a future date, and she will do that continually. You know, basically she learns based on your habits. Now Apple Maps got a rework. And honestly, this is one thing that frustrated me the most, lane guidance. Apple Maps used to never tell you which lane to be in when turning, now it will. Also, it will display the current speed limit, where applicable, where it can find it. And there's an altogether new feature called Do Not Disturb While Driving. So if your phone detects that you are moving while using the navigations, it will basically put your phone into complete dark mode and will only allow certain notifications to come through if you whitelist them. Not only that, there is a crash. <laughs> there is a new feature inside of Apple Maps that will allow you to get detailed information inside of airports and malls. So it's going to be a slow rollout but there will be hundreds of more, they say, each month. Now, photos and camera. Got a huge rework on all devices, in particular the 7 Plus. Got some nice features too, but so let's start with the general photos app. You actually jump in and take a live photo. You have several new effects you can apply. If you actually scroll up on the photo, you can see that there are several effects. I can choose between live, a loop on the photo, so it'll just go ahead and loop like that. And there is another one called the bounce, I believe. So it'll basically do a boomerang style where it'll go back and forth to your live photo. So I see Apple is really getting with the times here. There's also a long exposure, which is kind of neat. You can do after, mostly for nature and waterfall photos, but I think that's really cool. 
Also, which it gets better, you can choose which part of the live photo, the still image you want to keep. Some turn out better than others, and uh, with that, that's actually kind of funny. You can keep it right here, right here, and you can make that your key photo of the live photo. Super cool. Now, the portrait mode for the iPhone 7 Plus has received some updates as well. So it now works in the dark. It will now show HDR, and it's improved in many ways. So you're going to notice a much better experience. It's a lot higher quality too, so I can't wait to try that out. But portrait mode has been improved. And there's a new codec used in iOS 11 for video and photos, which means your photos will actually take up two times of less storage using the new HEVC codec. So that means if you have a low storage device, upgrading to iOS 11 will be very, very good for you storage-wise. You'll be able to take a lot more pictures and a lot more videos. And the App Store. The App Store has got a complete rework. It looks completely different. To be honest with you, I think it's, it's not good for the App Store because it's just too big. A lot of people like to see you know, things compact in that list view, which uh, is now gone. Everything is really blown up like the music application. So I'm personally not a fan, but this is the new look of the App Store. There are several new tabs. So today, games and an apps. And in here, you'll find basically what you had before, just slightly a uh, different placement in the App Store. Not to mention now applications, you can separately buy the in-app purchases instead of just the app. So you'll find the in-app purchases in the app store instead of just within the app. So I think that's a little bit too much clutter, but Apple seems to think it's a good idea. And HomeKit has received support for speak. Okay. Okay. Makes me dizzy. Uh, Bob? Kennedy? Yeah. Um, is Adobe uh, going to uh, utilize, I mean, take those new uh, formats, do you think? I'm, I'm not sure, but I know they work together because Adobe was talking about developing their creative cloud system based very much on Apple and with working with Apple. Yeah, so see, they, Jerry. They made that point at their uh, conference. Yeah, they seem to be working better together. Jerry mentioned that he thought uh, with the with the smaller sizes of the pictures and the videos that there would be some quality loss and I did some research and that's not the case at all. That's not if the anything, case. the quality is improved. Yeah. I saw an article on that mm -hmm. and I actually, uh, Bob had sent me a, a, and asked if I was going to talk a little bit about photos today and this is about as much as I was going to say as what this guy yeah. said. But I sent him an article uh, that I found and it, was, and it was just on this file Thing, and it said that the quality was going to stay the same, if not uh, even improve a little bit. So that'll help with storage. Yes, Tom. And did you say earlier which uh, iPhones will accept the iOS 11? Uh, it, it goes back pretty far, but I mean that's something you can Google, and a whole list will come up of iPhones and iPads. Just say, just Google uh, which um, iPhones and, and iPads will accept will work under iOS 11, and a whole list will come up. But it goes back pretty far. I think it goes back to the 5S Thank you. Uh, on the phone, as I recall. And I don't, on the iPads, I think it goes back. I thought I said something out to the discussion group to that effect. Uh, you might have, but I didn't you know. The split screen on the iPad doesn't work on the older iPads, though. It works on the Pro, and I think it might be the Air 2. I think it does. The Pro and the Air 2. Those are the only ones that I have, so I can't. You know, cer certain features when you go back will not right. work. Right. Um, the Air 1, I think, will do the little slide over, but the split screen, I think, is only on the Air 2 and the Pro. Yes. I think you're, I think you're right on that. Yes. Is there any way to lock a note? For instance, I go to Costco with my grocery list. Yeah. Pull it out of my pocket several times to look at it. Yeah. And you know, Bert and I have erased it or lost it or... Yeah. Um, I can actually show you what I do, which is... Um, if I can... If I can... Um, I can keep other notes. Get on here. Secure quick. stuff on Okay. There. So here's... Here's what I have on mine. I, I actually don't have it in notes. Um, I have it in reminders, and I'll show you the list that I that I have. One of them is Costco. 
Yeah, I use that as an example, but I keep other information that I don't want to lose in notes, and I would lock it if there's a way to prevent it from erasing. Oh, you would lock the actual note? Yeah. Um, I think that... Uh, Isn't that in the cloud also? It's in the cloud. So you shouldn't lose it. You shouldn't, you shouldn't well, lose it. And, it and, and if you erase it, it keeps it for 30 days. All right. That would be... That's yeah. right. Thank you. Uh, I thought you were talking about the list thing. You've seen that. I, I have. Yeah. 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 Uh, since I have it up, I'll show you what, what it is, because I already I use this all the time. So, um, Okay, so here's Costco, and there's nothing on the list that appears, but if I show, show completed items, these are all items that at one time or another was on, or was on my Costco list. So when I'm going to Costco, I'll tell you a funny story about this, but I sit down with my wife and I just say, okay, let's go over to the list. Do we need Parmesan cheese? Yeah. Do we need, some of these things I'll say, I know we don't need. So, so uh, do we need avocados? Yeah, we need fruit. Yeah, we need water. Oh, yeah, we need uh, uh, we need some ham and we need some peanut butter. And that, okay, so that's, then all these other things I know we don't need any of that. So then I hide completed, and this is my Costco list. And when I get in the store, I just pull up the list, and uh, about when I'm half, halfway through, I say, well, what did I forget? I say, I got this, got this, oh, I forgot the fruit, got this, and I needed the ham. So then I'm going through those. And I just find that very half, uh, handy, and I've actually got one for uh, Home Depot. I've got one, uh, this one is actually for, this one is actually for, um, Public, so regular grocery store. Um, can so you change the order after you've created that? No, it, it, you can change the order, but as soon as you go in and, uh, and mark them as completed, it, it, yeah, that came up before. It just goes back to the old way. Um, but that's something that I use, um, use quite often uh, and find to be very, very handy. Uh, no, you said you can change. So let's say you're going to Costco or Publix. So you created your new list yeah. and you switch it around in, in the way that you're going to walk through the store. Just for that one. Time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can do that. I mean, if you go in here and and you go to um, go to Costco and you know I'll, I'll put a few of these in here real quick again. Okay, um, and we go from here. Uh, you can go edit, and you can move these around. Oh, Peanut okay. butter first, and I'll yeah. put, okay, the water. So maybe that helps you know what you're, where right. you're thinking where these things are in the store. But yeah. what I'm saying is, is that, okay, now you're done. Once you check these things off as being done, when you go to the completed list, right. they're no longer in that order. They yeah. just get thrown back in. That's yeah, really bad about it. I have an app now that if I go to the Publix, I just put my phone in the cart, the cart runs around the store. And <laughs> <laughs> so that brings up the story I was going to tell. I was talking to one of my biking buddies the other day, and I said, yeah, i got to take this thing back to Costco. He says, oh, yeah, he says, unauthorized purchases. So what are we talking about? He says, when you go back to this, whenever I go back to the store and take something back, they'll say, well, why are you bring it back? I just say unauthorized purchase, and they don't question it. Uh, I, because they know it was my wife. <laughs> <laughs> so I went to, uh, honest to God, the next day I had to take this thing back to Costco, and I'm in the return line. I get up to this gal, and I said, here, I got this yesterday. Unauthorized purchase. She says, okay. I said, you know what that means? She says, yeah. Boston to prove it. <laughs> oh, and I just about died when she I mean, she knew. I thought, oh, this guy's on to something. Uh, I thought that was so funny. Okay, that, yes, one more question. One last question, Mary Connor. Are they coming out with a new iPhone this fall? I heard a rumor it has been squelched. No, they're coming out. It'll be out in September. There's been some rumors that it might be delayed, but I don't think. It will. I think that they're. I think the strongest rumors, and if anybody thinks that this is not correct, you can correct me. Strongest rumors is there'll be three phones come out, and eight will come out. That'll cost more, 
It'll be an OLD screen, OLED or whatever they call it, screen, uh, and, and it will cost more. And it'll be probably the best, have a better camera in it. And then there'll be a 7 um, uh, S and a 7 S Plus, which will be the same format as... You mean an 8S and an 8S Plus? No, there'll be an 8, and then there'll be a 7... Oh. And there'll be a seven. There'll be a seven S, which will be an upgrade to this, and there'll be a seven S plus, which will be an upgrade to the one that. There, and the eight will be a. Larger. The eight will be a larger, a slightly larger phone, because I think it. Uh, yeah. So, uh, I mean, I, I pretty much made up my mind what I'm going to do in that regard, because I don't think I want to pay a couple hundred dollars more, and I don't like the larger phones personally. I know you do. Uh, but I, even well, though it has, even though it has the, even though it has that, yeah, for the, the, the photo, tracks. even though it has better photo, uh, since they put on the um, motion, um, what do they call it, stabilizer, wow. motion stabilizer on the, on the image stabilizer, stabilizer on, now that that's available on the seven, which I have a seven now, uh, and which is a smaller one, uh, I'm, I'm sure I'll, that's probably what I'll get. I would be willing. First of all, you might have to give up your job as the expert IOS if you don't have the latest, <laughs> most updated phone. <laughs> and I would be willing to bet, knowing you, that that will not happen. I don't think I'm going to do that anyway. We'll have to see. But anyway, yeah, that's the rumor. That's, that's, that seems to be the rumor, and there's been a lot of rumors that it'd be delayed, but I don't think it will. Okay.